what is going on. So it must be hard for you because you've been critical, unfortunately, of LeBron through the years. It must be hard for you to stomach that sellout crowd and that seamless offense last night. Not at all. I mean, the only reason it was a sellout is these are the real fans who won't be able to get into the regular season games. <laughs> so they had to go to this game because the rich people aren't willing or don't want to go see this. You know this. You don't watch a preseason NBA game. Unless somebody gave you the tickets or or you just happen to come across them. That's right. the only way you would go to that. So, But this is going gonna, gonna to be interesting. It's going to be fascinating, right? I, I'm not buying all that. I think it's going to wind up being a bad sitcom, Colin. That's what I think will eventually happen. You've heard of Eight, of, Eight is Enough. You remember that? Yeah, I, as a kid. Yeah, I yeah this is going to be not enough. And this is going <laughs> to be a situation where people at first will be all in thinking that something's happening here and they're going to win the Western Conference and they're going to go to the NBA Finals. And then those kids aren't ready and those cast-offs that they signed as well with LeBron aren't working out. And then they'll go, oh, LeBron doesn't have anybody. And then the whole narrative will be about, A, he doesn't have anybody, so you can't blame him that they were the seventh or eighth seed in the Western Conference. And then who's coming next year? Who are we going to get? Everybody keeps talking about this like it's automatic. Colin, nobody wants to play with LeBron. I keep waiting for somebody to tell me, name the guy. All the new guys, even Jimmy Butler says, I want out of Minnesota, right? Mm-hmm. He, had, he could have named any team he wanted to. Did he, did he, he said he wanted to come to L.A., but to the Clippers. He wanted to go to Brooklyn. He wanted to go to New York, to the Knicks. So you don't think players want to play with him? I just don't see it. Where's the evidence? Even when LeBron was in Cleveland with the free agency the first time before he went to Miami, yeah, he he was trying he was trying to get guys to come to Cleveland with him. People should want to play with the greatest player on the planet. I don't care where it is. Oh, it's Cleveland. Who wants to be there and all this? Dude, it's six months out of your out of your life, and you're on the road for half of those games. So it's not really the place. It's about who the guy is. You don't think this is gonna work? You think it's going to be a, a 37-win team? They won, uh, 43. They, I'm not there. Wow! 43. Mark it down. They it's won, not going to be 50 like everybody. Everybody. I've got a couple chicken wing bets with friends. They got 53 wins. That's a, that's a, Are you kidding me? That's taking candy from a baby. They won 35 last year. You know, if LeBron wasn't here, I would argue they'd win 41, 42 without him just because the young players would be healthier and better. I just think the Western Conference, I saw this guy, LeBron, did he not struggle last year against the Pacers and Oladipo? Yeah, but that he, that, it was a struggle there. Was it a struggle against Boston? He won seven games. No, I got it. But he's a struggle without their two best players. All I'm saying is the Western Conference is much better than what LeBron's been playing against over the last decade. That's all. A couple of NFL things. Uh, Jason Garrett, um, you know, I've said this before, is Jerry's not going to replace him. There's a book out by Gary Myers called How About Them Cowboys, and Jerry doesn't want to replace him. And are you comfortable with that? You know what? This is like one of the, the – this is not – everybody thinks it's a mystery. How come Jason Garrett's never on the hot seat? But, Colin, this is the reason why. And, and, and look at this graphic here. Okay. Jerry Jones, he might as well have hired Howdy Doody. <laughs> I, I mean, when you look at Jason Garrett on the sidelines, the only thing you can't see are the strings because this is all about Jerry Jones. He's coaching the Cowboys. He, the reason that they haven't won is because he won't go out and get a real football coach, right? that will push back against him, and he's running the Cowboys like a mom-and-pop store. He won't get the NFL people to, to make the decisions. That's why they are where they are. They're no longer America's team. They're South America's team because they're always under 500. <laughs> Come on. That's what they are. So you, you don't think – you think basically Jason Garrett is essentially just essentially a puppet for Jerry. That, that's what – it's in the book uh, mentioned by Gary Myers, and I, I buy into that because – they, they made the playoffs two out of the eight years he's been coach. And, and uh, you think the Cowboys are closer, any closer to winning a Super Bowl no, since he's been there? No, I don't. That's a fair point. I do not. I do not. And, that, and, and then if I were to ask you, what are the Cowboys? What are they? I don't think you could give me that. No, they, do, they, do they have a – do the Dallas Cowboys have a um, – what's the word I'm looking for? Do they have a um, – they have a brand. Do they have? Um, yeah, it's not a I, no. Do they have an identity? Right. Like what? Like um, you look at teams. Certain teams are defensive. Some teams are offensive. I would say they're a running back led team, which outside of Sean Alexander in the 2005 Super Bowl, 
you just don't get to the Super Bowl with a running back led team. In fact, many of the great running backs, Walter Payton, Barry Sanders, Ladenny, and Tomlinson, they didn't even have playoff wins. Like struggle to win playoff games. Forget the Super Bowl. So they're you know, it's it's very funny. Nobody likes the coach in Dallas. You know, a lot of people push back and a lot of push back on Dak. Would Jerry be comfortable with a great coach and a superstar quarterback? No, I don't think so. And that was a problem when he had Bill Parcells. You know what I mean? When you have a guy who have a strong uh, take on football and is going to not just listen to the owner because you write the checks. So I think once he decided that he doesn't want a guy like that, I think that's why the Cowboys are in this situation. People can go crazy over the Cowboys all the time, but look at where they are now. They're a bad football team. They're not great. They're, they're certainly not elite. They're, and I know they beat the Lions this past week, but that was a given. I mean, I, but after the Lions beat the Patriots, I knew they were going to fall right back into Lionese and, <laughs> and go right back to where they were. Okay, Tom Brady, uh, his beautiful wife yesterday, what a loving couple. She came out yesterday and she said, listen, I, 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 he loves football so much. Uh, I'm going to let him play. And it was really, a t- it was very cute. It was actually an amazing moment. Good morning, America. Giselle Bungeon. Uh, uh, Joy, let- can you pass me a tissue? You got a tissue over there. I, th- I think she's an incredibly cool woman. She's very secure in her. I, I love her. She's the best. Uh, she's great. But you don't buy into Brady. No, I just think that where we are now, and, and I'm not, he's one of the greatest uh, as far as accomplishments for a quarterback. I give you that. I've always said, Colin, he is a great player. I've never said that. Has he been lucky over his career? Yeah, but the narrative now is like a fairy tale. That's where we are. I'm expecting magic beans and other stuff to, <laughs> to, to come into the – but the reality of Tom Brady this year is that the Patriots are averaging nine points less than they did a year ago. They're not the team that everybody's making them out. I know Miami didn't show up. They get that blowout win. Everything is not cured. Miami never got off the bus. Uh, for that game. But Tom Brady, look at look at some of these numbers here. They're they're not good. They've all gone down for Tom Brady. Uh they're nine points, nine points less, which is the biggest drop in the AFC. It is. And then and then you start looking at his completion rate. Tom Brady's twenty first in the league. Okay, but can I can I push back on this? Sure. So his number one receiver, Julian Edelman, has been hurt. Uh they let Nate Solder left tackle, Deion Lewis and Danny Amendola go. Wasn't it sort of expected? If you're a football fan, September was going to be bumpy for Tom. But the only problem is the narrative has always been he doesn't have anybody. He makes anybody. He can get a guy from 7-Eleven who worked on Saturday, played for Tom Brady on Sunday, and catch two touchdowns. That's the narrative. Now that he doesn't have some of these weapons that, that, that everybody's now saying, well, you can't blame them. This is the LeBron factor. This is where these things keep coming up. For guys that people like and are enamored by, they make every excuse. The bottom line and the fact, Colin, is that Tom Brady hasn't played that well this year. Did You saw the Lions game. You thought he played well? No, but I think there are, in life, there are reasons and excuses. Dog ate my homework's an excuse. Uh, I was on a school bus and it got T-boned. That's a reason you're late for school. I think when you don't have Edelman and uh, you let Deion Lewis, who was really good, go, Danny Amendola go, um, Belichick, September's always been very much an extension of preseason for Belichick. It's his worst month. I think these are, things are explained. I, I, I think... Something's going to happen tomorrow night that's going to shock people. Maybe, maybe shock people. Maybe not. But what are you I, predicting? The Colts I am, uh, upset victory? I, no, I am predicting that New England will win the division. But I don't think they're as good, by the way, because I don't think they're dynamic enough in the perimeter, and I don't think they have a pass rush. And those will, in the end, they will succumb to those too. I don't think Brady's the issue. By the so end of you, the year, you believe Tom Brady will win another Super Bowl? I, 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 why does it have to be? The, no, I'm asking. That's what I, I think. He will be in the Super Bowl conversation for the next two to three years. He'll be in that group of five or six teams. Yes. I can't see it. No. Not with the defense and not where Tom Brady's headed. I want you guys to look it up. Google it. Take a look at Brett Favre's 40, 40th, uh, when he was 40 years old, his numbers. They're almost equal to Tom Brady when Tom was 40. And look at 41. They fell off the cliff. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.